Hey, what's up, YouTube? The other day, I toyed with the idea of using Niagara to create some interactive grass or foliage, and some folks on Twitter asked me if that could be used to make some fur that would work with an animated skeletal mesh, and so I gave this a quick try. It's very experimental, I'm not sure how scalable this solution is, and it has a couple of issues, namely my chip spring system isn't frame rate independent at all, but I thought it was interesting enough to show you guys how it's made. Now, there's already a quite involved hair system in Unreal Engine that is at least partially based on Niagara, so obviously this is by no means intended to replace it, it's just really a silly experiment on my own that I wanted to share. Anyway, let's start with the grass example. First of all, I made a sphere that I could drag around using a simple blueprint. I have click events enabled in my controller, so that allows me to call that unclicked event on that first sphere volume in my blueprint. That volume is made to block everything, just to make sure that the click event is indeed triggered when I click on that actor. Now, there's many ways to handle click events. For instance, on top of that unclicked event, you could call the unreleased event as well. The thing is that event will not fire if you release the left click while the mouse is not hovering the actor, so that might be a limitation you need to work around. It wouldn't be an issue in our case, but still, I chose to go the lazy way and enable tick when the actor is grabbed, and then on tick I continuously check if the left mouse button is pressed to know if the actor is still grabbed. Now, the click event here fires before the left mouse button will register as pressed, so this will be called tick will immediately start, and thus this will be false at first. To go around that, I added this safety frame check that allows this to be false once before the left mouse button is actually considered not pressed if it is indeed not pressed. If the left mouse button is pressed though, I get the mouse position on viewport, scaled by the DPI, convert it to world space, and use that to do a line plane intersection and find where to set the actor's new planar location. I also derive a velocity from that new location and delta time. Then here I get a Niagara parameter collection to send this actor's new location and the velocity we just computed. Then if the left mouse button is not pressed, I turn off tick and then notify one last time the Niagara parameter collection of this actor's latest location and of a zero velocity. With all that, I can drag around that sphere in game and Niagara may access this actor's location and velocity at all times via the Niagara parameter collection. Sweet. Moving on, let's check that Niagara particle system. First, the emitter is set to loop once and has an infinite duration. Particles are not killed when their lifetime have elapsed, that way particles are spawned once and they remain alive forever. A mesh renderer is used to display those grass instances. Those particles, or grass instances, are spawned in a grid. Positions are then further randomized using a box location. Grass instances are made to point upward, but are randomly rotated in Yo using that initial mesh orientation module. Down there, I have two curl noise force modules, one for high frequency wind and one for low frequency wind. Now, notice that I don't use any solve forces and velocity module, right? Because I actually don't want the grass instances themselves to move. I want to animate them, sure, but that's done in a different way, more on that in a minute. They really shouldn't move though, so those curl noise forces are not used to directly drive the particles' velocities and thus make them move, rather the force vectors they output are used in a costume module down there. Those are my cheap spring segment approximation modules. Before that though, I have this other custom module that just creates a sphere mask based on the particle's location and our pawn's location we can get via that parameter collection to gradually output our pawn's velocity the closer a particle is from our pawn's location. And that output vector is used in our spring segment modules as a force as well as those curl noise forces. We may also specify a segment start, direction and length, and some faked spring parameters. We may also clamp the segment's particle location to never cross a virtual plane oriented like so and located at the particle's location. That's used so our grass doesn't go below the ground here. Anyway, let's check in depth what this module does. We start by computing the target rest world location of our segment. That's the start location plus direction multiplied by the length of the segment. Then at first, this initialized value is false. And so at first, I make sure the spring velocity is null, 
the spring direction is right away its intended rest direction and the spring position itself is its rest location. If the spring is initialized already though, I just pass through those variables. Then I cache the current spring's location, compute the amount of force to add based on delta time, compute how much the spring should move towards its target rest location, and here I pretty much sum them up all. That's where the fake springiness comes into play though. I use the spring velocity as an extra offset so it may maintain some momentum and wiggle around. It's definitely not physically correct and as I said it has frame rate dependency issues, but I did some research and couldn't find any papers on how to easily do this kind of springy segments, so I had to come up with my own method and it's definitely not perfect. But again, this is just a quick experiment, so that will do just fine. Here I optionally check if that new spring location is below a plane, given a normal and the particle's position, to ensure it doesn't go below that plane. Again, that's used for the grass demo, to make sure the grass doesn't go below the ground, and for the fur demo as well, using the surface normal, so that the fur doesn't penetrate the mesh too much. Basically, I'm just adding an offset to that spring location, based on how much it's below that plane, so that if indeed below the plane, it's now flushed against it, if that makes sense. Anyway, then compute that new spring direction, and then here I cheat and clamp that new spring location so that it remains at a fixed distance from the start point, so the segment's length is maintained. So actually, it's not a spring at all, right? This is all just a very fake way to make the tip of a segment move and wiggle around with a springy behavior. Then I derive a velocity based on this new spring position and its previous position. Here I update the spring with its new value and we know for sure that it's now initialized. And I do that twice. The first spring segment starts at the particle's position and its rest direction is straight up. The second spring segment however starts at the end of the first spring segment and wants to point towards whatever that first spring segment direction is so both eventually make a straight line. Then here I just set a color based on the first and second spring's velocity for visualization. In there I send both segments and positions to the material via dynamic material parameters. Now the spring's positions are in world space and I don't want that. I actually want an offset relative to those segments rest position, so those vectors may be used in the shader to offset vertices in world space, right? So that's what I do here. Down there I have two sprite renderers, both use a very simple material as you can see. Their pivots are shifted in Y and the particle sprite size in Y equals our springy segment size. That way we can display a segment starting from the particle's position and pointing towards the first spring direction by overriding the sprite alignment binding like so. For the second sprite renderer, same principle but we override its position bindings as well so it's the position of the first spring's world position and points towards the second spring direction. Voila, with that we have a debug view of our springy segments and it looks like they really are attached to each other, but in fact not really, and it looks like it's made of multiple particles, but it's not. I'm pretty much just leveraging the fact that you can override those bindings and draw multiple sprites at arbitrary locations for a single particle. Neat, now all we have to do is to make use of those spring offsets we send to those grass instances materials. It's done using those dynamic parameter nodes. I have a first one with index 0 and a second one with index 1, so each may carry 4 floats. We combine the first 3 floats we sent to reconstruct the first offset, and the second offset as well with the next 3 floats, and we help those two vectors based on the length of the grass and it's pretty much sent as is to the world position offset. Now here I do make use of a tiny setup to make sure to clamp each vertex to the ground so they may not go below it. And voila, we should now have our grass nicely reacting to our sphere being dragged around. All that made with Niagara. Sweet. For the fur it's actually really similar. Instead of spawning particles in a grid though, they are randomly attached to the surface of the skeletal mesh that the Niagara system is parented to and the grass instance orientation quaternion is constantly updated to point towards the surface normal. Now that has some twisting issues, so I'm looking for a better way to do this, but again, quick experiment, right? So yeah, basically it's not much different than the grass particle system, 
and it's so fluffy. <laughs> it probably looks like a hot mess of pixels on YouTube though. <laughs> voilà, it's available as a Char 1 reward on my Patreon. Link will be in the video description below. Now I'm going to take a well-deserved summer break, then I'm going to focus on actually making some more progress on my own game. It's been put on hold for a while, so yeah, I guess I'll see you in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. I'll see you soon, take care of yourself, bye bye!